Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives. Uh, still working on our engineering science info. Uh, we are going to be focusing on the August 2023 exam uh, question paper so that we check how we're supposed to attempt uh, this question on uh, angular motion. Uh, so uh, let us quickly rush through the questions and see how we're supposed to attempt uh, these questions we are given on question number 2.1, that is, uh, the time on a tower clock. So there is a tower clock in this case uh, changes from 1410 to 1430. Uh, if the length of the minute end is uh, 0 0.75 meters, calculate. All right, so we are referring to a clock in this case, we should uh, to change in terms of the time. Uh, let us just consider uh, in terms of a simple diagram. Sorry for that. Let us just consider in terms of a simple diagram like this. If we are given this as a clock, we know that we are going to be having the hour hand and also we are going to be referring to the minute hand. So because we are given the length of the minute hand, we want to know how the minute hand was operating from 1410. Uh, let us just take it from the center. All right, uh, let us just take it uh, from the center to a certain point maybe that's at uh, 1410. So this minute end is going to move along, is going to move until a certain time. That is what we are given. So the time frame that we are given is the one that is going to give us an angle of through which the minute end traveled from a certain point up to a certain point. So which point are we referring to? We are referring to the starting point, the time that was taken from 1410 to 1430. We are given in terms of time, but we can refer this in terms of the angle in this case, all right? We can talk about the angle that indicates this time frame from 1410 to 1430. Uh, let us say this is uh, our 1410 and uh, this is our 1430. How are we going to find the angle that was taken through which the minute end was traveling from 1410 up to 1430. We are going to find the time first. Uh, that is how many minutes are we going to have? So it's going to be 1430, the final time that we are given in this case, uh, minus 1410. All right, so we are going to subtract uh, 1410 in this case, all right? So we've got uh, 20 minutes. Uh, these are the minutes, these are the hours. So we are going to obtain 20 minutes in this case, all right? So meaning to say the minute and it covered 20 minutes in terms of time. What about in terms of angle? If this minute end travels for the complete revolution, meaning to say for one hour, which means we are talking about how many minutes in an hour? We are talking about 60 minutes. If this minute end has traveled a complete revolution, which is 60 minutes for an one hour, we are going to see that this 60 minutes is, is going to correspond with the 360 degrees. We are talking about a complete revolution being covered. So with this, we can ask ourselves to say, what about if it is covered 20 minutes? How many degrees are being covered in this case? So that is the conversion that you're simply making or the conversion that you're simply putting into consideration. Knowing that we are going to be referring to the movement of angular motion, so we are not going to be talking about these degrees. We are going to be talking about the radian. So in place of us writing 60 uh, 360 degrees, we are asking ourselves this complete revolution in radians, it is equal to what? So we are going to have uh, 60 minutes equal to 2 pi radians. Remember, pi radians is 180 degrees. 2 pi is 360 degrees. So what about uh, 20 minutes? How many radians are we going to have? Since this is measured in radians, it means we are going to obtain our answer in radians. So that is the consideration. So it's going to be a less, which is 20 over 60 times 2 pi, right? So we are going to have uh, 20 over 60 uh, times 2 pi in radians, right? So if we are to uh simplify this part 
we were going to obtain uh, two over three in this case, okay? Uh, let us see from our calculator here, that's, um, we are going to have this as uh, uh, two over, that's uh, two over, okay, sorry for that. We've got 20 over 60, all right? So that's 20 over 60 uh, multiplied to uh, two, in this case, two pi. So that's it. We are going to obtain uh, two over three pi radians, okay? So this is going to give us uh, two over three pi radians. Or you can just convert, which is fine, in degrees. If you find your answer in degrees, then you have to convert that answer to radians is just one and the same thing. So meaning to say the angle that is being covered in this case is going to be uh, two over three pi radians. All right, given the length of the minute here and that it is 0 0.75 meters, we are given also the length of the minute here and 0 0.75 meters, meaning to so also here, we are going to have 0 0.75 meters because this uh, is represents the same length of a minute end. So we're talking about this uh, as the radius of a circle, uh, but you're talking about a sector, a part of a circle. All right, so the question of, uh, of, of this information that we have is uh, first on 2.11 to calculate the angular displacement of the minute end, to calculate the angular displacement of the minute end. All right, so in actual sense here, we have already calculated the angular displacement because the angular displacement is theta. So we're just trying to list the information that we're given, but not knowing that in listing this information, we are calculating the angular displacement. So we have already calculated the angular displacement. Remember angular displacement is theta. So here theta is equal to two over three uh, pi radians. You can just write this uh, um, in this way. Okay, so that was the first part we have already answered. Uh, 2.12, the circumferential distance moved by the mid minute end. Uh, the circumferential distance is the linear distance. We are talking about the linear uh, displacement. We've got angular displacement. Then we've got the linear. It's a conversion that happens uh, from the angular displacement to the linear displacement. So you simply multiply by the radius, uh, whatever that you have from angular to linear, you multiply by the radius. So that is a two comma one two. So S representing uh, the circumferential uh, distance in this case is equal to the radius times theta, which is the angular uh, displacement. If it is velocity, it is going to be radius times the angular velocity. If it is acceleration, radius times angular acceleration, that's how we can calculate from angular to linear uh, values. So that is our distance in meters. So we've got the radius, which is the length of the minute end in meters. So it's gonna be uh, 0 0.75 times theta in radians. So our theta in radians is given as uh, two over three pi, all right? So that was going to give us S in, uh, meters, which is going to be half pi, or 1,571 in meters. Uh, take note, we're talking about uh, the linear uh, displacement. So it's supposed to be measured in meters, angular displacement in radians. Okay, so that's how we attempt these typical questions. Uh, take note, uh, make sure that you watch the video on the introduction of the angular motion, I talked about this, uh, and these formulas actually, okay? Then we've got the angular velocity. Remember I said the angular velocity can be taken from the angular displacement over the time that uh, frame, over the time frame. So we need the angular velocity, which is the angular velocity in radians per second. Uh, so that our angular velocity is going to be angular displacement over the time. Just like velocity is equal to uh, distance over time, but here we are going to use angular uh, displacement. We are talking about angular velocity, so it must be angular displacement. So our angular displacement uh, in radians is uh, 2 over 3 pi, so this is uh, 2 pi over 3 over the time. Remember the time that was taken from 
14.10 to 14.30, we are given time, 20 minutes in this case. So in order for us to obtain our angular velocity in rad per second, because this is measured in rad per second, if you calculate with these minutes, it is going to be rad per minute. So we're supposed to have it in rad per second. So we have to convert the minutes to seconds. So how are we going to do this? One minute is equal to 60 minutes, uh, 60 seconds, sorry, sorry for that. 60 uh, seconds, what about 20 minutes? How many uh, seconds are you gonna have? So it's 20 times 60, uh, which is 1,200. So here we are going to use the time in seconds, which is um, 20 by 60, uh, 20 by 60 here. It's gonna be 1,200, yeah, 1,200 uh, seconds. So if we are going to use 1,200 seconds. So this is in rad, this is in uh, seconds. So the rad over the second is gonna give us rad per second. Okay, so that was going to give us uh, 1, uh, 745 and so on and so on times 10 to the exponent of minus three. So it's uh, 745 times 10 to the exponent of uh, negative three in rad per, rad per second. So angular velocity measured in rad per second. All right, so then let's move on to the other part of the question, which is uh, 2.14. That was uh, to calculate the linear acceleration of the minute and also state the reason for your answer. All right, like I said, uh, from angular, uh, values we can convert to linear. If it was the linear acceleration, it was supposed to be acceleration is equal to the radius times the angular acceleration. But talking of the minute end, if you check how the minute end moves from a certain point as the minute end is moving, it is moving at the same pace, at the same pace throughout. It is moving at the same pass throughout. If we consider this uh, to a normal object, if a car is moving at a same velocity throughout, it is maintaining the velocity throughout, it is not changing. You are driving at 120 kilometers per hour, you are maintaining a certain speed. It means there is no acceleration, there is no change of uh, velocity. So there is no acceleration. The same thing with the minute end, the way it moves, it is moving at the same velocity. So meaning to say our angular acceleration in this case is going to be zero rad per square second. We are not gonna have uh, any acceleration. So if our angular acceleration is zero, it means also the linear acceleration is zero because we are supposed to have our acceleration as the radius of uh, 0 0.75, uh, times the angular acceleration, which is zero. So we're going to have zero uh, meters per se uh, square second. We need to say there is no a, a linear acceleration. It's because of what? It's because the minute end, it is maintaining the same speed. So the minute end does not change the speed. So there's a constant angular acceleration. So there's a, a constant speed. So we need to say there is no angular acceleration. If there is no angular acceleration, there is no uh, linear acceleration. That is the consideration of, of uh, this question. All right, let us check question 2.2, .2, which is the application of uh, a force given or a force being applied on a spanner. In this case, we are given that a force of 480 Newton is applied to the end of the spanner. Uh, the force creates an angle of 60 degrees and the length of the spanner at the point of application of, to the center of the nut is 270 millimeters, which means we are given uh, to the center, that is the radius uh, between. So given a certain length, I'm just gonna take this uh, out of a certain length, which is the radius of uh, the spanner, in this case of uh, 270 millimeters, uh, which you convert to meters, we divide by 1,000, is going to be 0, uh, 027 in meters. So being applied at, and the force is being applied at an angle of 60 degrees. If the force is being applied at an angle of uh, 60 degrees, 
what is going to be the torque in this case, given a force of uh, 480 Newton in this case, what is going to be the torque? All right, the question here is, uh, so you're supposed to answer it properly. Remember that the torque is equivalent to the perpendicular force. We are going to be considering uh, the perpendicular force in this case times the radius, which means uh, to the center of what of the nut. So if we are to consider the perpendicular force in this case, this is what is gonna happen guys. On our triangle here, we are going to consider this way. All right, this is our perpendicular force here. So the perpendicular force taken uh, at an angle which is inside this triangle here, all right? This angle is 60 and here we are having 90 degrees. So 90 minus 60, you are going to have uh, 30 degrees. So the perpendicular to the ground, which is this uh, perpendicular force is going to be given as F cos theta, which is the force given times the cosine of theta, whereby the cosine of theta the angle that is inside of the triangle in this case, all right? So meaning to say uh, our formula can be adjusted in this case to say the perpendicular force here, the perpendicular force is going to be the force given uh, times the cosine of theta times the radius. So we're gonna have the torque in this case from there. So that is the force of 480. So we're going to have four, 480, uh, cos theta, which is our angle inside of the triangle, that is cos uh, 30 degrees times the radius of the spanner in this case, which is uh, 0.27 in meters. So that was going to give us the value of the torque in this case. That is how we can calculate this value of the torque, which is going to be uh, 112.237 uh, in Newton meters, all right? So remember force measured in Newton, the radius is in meters, you're simply multiplying uh, Newton times meters in this case, all right? So that was our question. Let's check uh, 2.22, uh, the work done. If the nut is turned through an angle of 85 degrees, take note, it is turned at an angle of 85 degrees. So the work done is going to be given, remember our work done from, uh, uh, the product of uh, torque and the angle given. So our work done is going to be torque times the angle that is being rotated or the angle that is being moved or the angle that is being shifted in radians. This angle is supposed to be in radians in this case, all right? So to convert to radians, we have got uh, uh, options that we can make. You can use uh, pi is equal to 180 degrees uh, what about 85 degrees is equal to one radians, or you can simply use theta in degrees over 57,3. So it means our work done in this case is going to be the torque that we calculated here of 112,237 times the angle in radians, our theta, it's 85 degrees. So it is going to be 85 over uh, 57,3. Comma three. That is, remember to convert to, to radians, divide by 57,3, the angle in degrees, or you can use this conversion that I'm explaining here. Still, you are going to obtain uh, one and the same thing. All right, so our work done uh, in this case was going to be 166,49467 and so on. So it's going to be 495 uh, measured in what? Which is measured in joules. Uh, so this is how our questions might be given as all you just need is to know how to apply your formulas, change of uh, units, and also the change of angles from radians to degrees and vice versa from degrees to radians. That's the concept of the angular motion. So make sure that you also watch the video on the introduction of the angular motion so that you also understand some of the formulas that we did not apply on this question, but are part of your syllabus. So you need to know the introduction so that you'll be able to know how to use your formulas and how to manipulate your formulas to answer any typical question that you'll be given.